No, we're, we're at uh, one of our houses. Nice. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, I guess we'll, we'll wait a few more seconds just to have everyone come in. Um, but um, if, if you guys are not aware um, with the announcement that just went out on Slack, so uh, our week one and week two just got switched out because um, our workshop speaker was double booked for the, the time slot. He had an investor call um, at the time. So, um, but it's not, a, not an issue, but we'll, we'll definitely have him for next week. Uh, and yeah, we'll just have a fun activity just, to, just for everyone to get to know each other. Um, yeah. And if you guys are doubling up, I, I know I, I see Aiden, like you guys are doubling up on one computer. Um, hey, um, if, if you guys can um, maybe split up into two computers, because we are doing breakout rooms and we're pairing people up with uh, different groups just to kind of, you know, for everyone to get to know each other. Um, yeah, I mean, if you guys can do that. Yeah, I just send the link, I'll get on. Okay. Okay, uh, I mean, Viraj, if you want to kick it off. Sure. Um... I'm not muted, right? You can hear me? You good? Yeah. Awesome. What's up, guys? Welcome to your first official fellowship event. Glad to have you guys here. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get the workshop speaker, as Ravon said, this week, but he'll be here next week. He's a great speaker, doing a lot of big, th big things with his startup, which is why he couldn't come today. So I'm really excited for that. But we kind of wanted to build off of our kickoff event. It was great. We got to meet each other. We got to learn more about entrepreneurship at Georgia Tech and being a student entrepreneur. But we haven't really built that community yet. And that's really what we want to help you guys do. Because one of the biggest problems about entrepreneurship in general is being isolated. That can cause a lot of problems, both mental and with your startup. And the greatest thing an entrepreneur can have is a supportive community around them. That's what we want to cultivate throughout this fellowship program. So this is one of the many events we'll try to host to help cultivate that community. So in here, this is the agenda for what's going to happen today. Maybe five minute rundown. I mean, we kind of postponed it a bit for waiting for people, but five minute rundown about what we're doing today, which is first, we're going to do an icebreaker, break out in different, like just breakout rooms, talk to each other, get to know each other, have a few questions you got to ask you guys. We're going to give your answer and talk about it. We're going to go into the intro of the activity. We're going to then split up in our breakout rooms again and actually go through this activity. And then we'll have each team present what they worked on and wrap up and call it a day. So first is the icebreaker format. It's pretty simple. Your name, the startup name, and your major, or if you're not a Georgia Tech student, what you're doing right now. And then the second question is, what is your favorite startup apart from your current startup? Because we all know our own startups are our favorite, I hope. But other than that, what other startups do you really like? Why? Or it could be like Uber. You know, they used to be a startup, and then they went big time. So that's kind of what we want to do. Um, Ravon, do you want to head into breakout rooms right now? Viraj, what's your favorite startup right now? Oh, that's a good one, bro. Let's see. I don't know if it's a startup, but Momentum, the space infrastructure company, I think they're probably my favorite because I just find that stuff so cool. Like, space is dope. And then building an infrastructure for space just sounds like you're building a mini space city. Just sounds so cool. What about you, Yuma? Mine? Um, I don't know if you all know this, but it's called Flybean. Um, they make, oh, yeah. I, I see some nods. So, yeah. The, um, the, what they do is they make, like, AI-powered, like, 
slides for you. Yeah, exactly. And I was just about to say, like Aiden said, their YouTube, oh my gosh, it is awesome. Like the value they provide is amazing. So um, besides like what they do, like what they do is great, but the fact that they're sort of giving back to the community is it's amazing. Um, so. I've heard of them. It's kind of confusing to use for me though, but I'll figure it out one day. Hey, Viraj, uh, it's not, uh, break arms might have, I don't know, I don't see it. Uh, go hover over more and then. Uh, yeah, it's just not there. Oh, okay. I guess I can do it. Yeah. Yeah, you're a host. My bad. All right, let's do this. And we'll switch it up as they get created so we can ensure everybody's in a different breakout room. We should be good to go. Oh, never mind, we're not. I hate breakouts. So you should be prompted to be joining your breakout rooms right now. All right, what's up, guys? I hope your breakout rooms had good discussion and or roasted each other like I did with you, Mansara, but it happens. It happens. So, all right, now we're going to go into the activity for today, your mission, if you choose to accept it. I don't have my glasses because I left them in my car and my dad had to, like, do some stuff in my car. But pretend I'm wearing cool glasses right now and not, like, these computer weird ones. Essentially, there's a company called Rocket Mart. It's a low cost carrier rocket line that is one of the largest in the entire universe since there's only like three SpaceX, Blue Origin, and then like Rocket Mars. Essentially, they take you from Earth to Mars, right? Like that's pretty cool. And in like 2025, we're all going to be in Mars right now, just chilling, sipping Mai Tais and stuff like that. So we got to get this transportation going right now. A few years ago, the company finally became profitable. profitable. They were actually making money. After the longest time, they were actually making some money. But SpaceX decided to come in and said, nah, fam, I'm going to ruin your company. They did it by introducing massage shares in their new rocket, the Roadster rocket. So Rocket Mars came to Startup Exchange and the fellowship team and said, you have a bunch of really bright, innovative people. Come up with a solution to help us beat out SpaceX and to help us become the best transportation line there is. So that's your mission today. You'll be working with... Most of you guys will be in the same breakout rooms. I was going to switch it up a bit, but you'll be working on coming up with an idea. Try to figure out how you can help Rocket Mars beat out SpaceX and come up with a really innovative way to increase their profitability. It can be anything. You can go from 
building an entire new rocket, or figuring out how they can lower their costs. Just keep in mind, fuel costs a lot in this intergalactic transportation line. So maybe want to focus there. We'll be using a tool called, well, I have to pull it up now, called Mural. Each group, it'll be your breakout room number. You have your own mural. You have the little problem statement over here. You can, well, group one has a rocket ship. The other groups don't. So if you're in group one, you're pretty special. There's an ideation section where you can have any ideas. If you have a sticky note, just double click here. Well, not there. Double click there and you can add a little sticky note. And you type up your final solution here to show off to the other team. So I'll be dropping the link in the Slack right now. Go ahead. Oh, not Slack, sorry, the Zoom chat. Make sure all of y'all hop on that. I'll also be broadcasting it for people that weren't able to catch it. And now I'm gonna send you back to your breakout rooms and we're gonna start helping out Rocket Mars. Viraj, did you start the breakout rooms? Sorry, my, I couldn't figure out how to use this thing. They should all be started now. David, you're slacking, bro. Hello. Hello. Hi. We're currently in breakout rooms, so I'll be I'll move you to one real quick if you don't mind. Uh yeah, sure. Well, yeah, sure. Definitely. Essentially what we're doing is a small group activity to kind of just get to know the other teams a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. So it's not based on team. It's like mix everybody together. Yeah. yeah we just want to like kind of create that cross team community. Let's see. I'll okay. Sounds great. I'm going to put you in right now. Over here.
Start up exchange not joined. Yo, Ravon, that you can? Oh, lol, for group three literally dropped. <laughs> hey, Viraj, I think, uh, I think you'll, think you you have to know that we, we have the best ideas. Uh-huh. I'm looking yeah. at them. I'm looking at them. Wait, you, you're group one, right? I don't know. It's a secret. It's a secret. Like, the other guys had to build the rockets, right? Like, I mean. Now I don't know which group's group, which group. It'll be a mystery until, until we reveal our solutions. I see Kim, what are you so. smiling about? Do you think you have better ideas than me? Dude, I'm just always smiling. I don't know why you're picking on me. <laughs> okay. That's very okay. nice. Yeah, I feel like I never smile, dude. All right. I think we got everybody. So let's do this real quick. Why did I make you go in a bunch of breakout rooms and talk about a Mars trip that will probably never happen? I mean, as much as we want it to happen, it may not happen. And for one reason and one reason only, if I can share my screen, pivot, pivot, pivot. No matter, and I've already explained this before, no matter where you are in a startup, you could be starting up like three days ago, like you decided you're going to do a startup. You could be 20 years in, like some big companies, IBM, BlackBerry, you can be 20 years in and all of a sudden the market is going to shift, things are going to change and you got to pivot. This whole exercise was to show you how Pivoting is important even for a big scale company like Rocket Mars, like SpaceX, like Blue Origin. All these companies have to pivot. They have to work with their like competitors or they just have to figure out another market to attack when they're trying to keep their company alive and keep going. So now let's have each group present. I'm going to exit out of this presentation if I can figure out how to do that. Okay. And group one, take it away.
Yeah, okay. Um, I'll go ahead and get started with just to just to kind of explain our, our thought process. Um, so really what we have identified um, as the problem is that um, our competitors may have a better product and they are able to generate revenue um, at a gr greater scale than maybe what we can in the future. And so we're trying to address this problem um, through various solutions. And um, at a high level, we've realized there's three main pillars to our solutions. Um, the first being customer experience. We want to focus on what the customer's all about because um, that they're the ones who are paying for this experience, but also um, that's who we're catering to. Um, number two is entertainment. Um, we've done a little bit of research and we found out that it's a it's a seven month trip, so it's not a it's not an easy trip to make. So we we need to have some entertainment involved. Uh, and then number three is maybe uh, restructuring and seeing what what target audience we're addressing. So maybe having a multi tiered, uh, multi priced tiered um, um, rocket system could be cool. So rather than just only exploring premium options, uh, having a variety of options um, is interesting. And um, yeah, we'll get into our solution. So if uh, one of you all want to take out, take take on the first idea. Aiden, you want to you want to go first? Oh, I thought it was Braxton. Um, yeah. So oh. for oh, yeah. So for entertainment, um, we've thought about the gathering center or having a place um, to like make sure everyone's like happy uh, and making sure that like it, it's like yeah. He just pointed out his mouth. Uh, having like a gym room, uh, entertainment, uh, you know, because we're like going all over the place uh, in a rocket, and it's going to be like seven months, so it's gonna it's gonna be a long time. Um, and then uh, making sure that like you can maybe you know custom paint on the rocket uh, if you're in like the multi tier, but um, making sure it's like an experience that's like therapeutic. Maybe even having like a dog or something on there, um, and then uh, just you know, that's it. Anyone else want to take it? <laughs> yeah, um, Braxton, are you there? Yeah, man. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I think um, you really hit it on the head there. Just, um, again, like making it therapeutic, um, leaving all your problems behind, you know, adding dogs and you get to raise this puppy and, and not be lonely during that trip. Uh, but then when you get home, you get to keep that puppy and just have this awesome reminder of this incredible trip. You took some Mars. Um, and also just like possibly having like a place um, on Mars where people go and they can just have a therapeutic experience at a, a hotel or like this, a Mars resort type of thing. So and like having like multiple steps on the journey where it's like you could be on like Mars's moon or you could be on our moon and making that part fun as well. Yeah. Um, and I mean, one resource that's always going to be limited is time. Uh, and especially to the people making these trips definitely aren't um, kind of have wealth. So they're looking for something that they can, they don't really have to think about too much. So having the entire trip planned out for them is also a, a really good way to, uh, you know, lure in customers, you know, where you have them go to a Martian geyser, you know, have that whole entire hotel and that entire like therapeutic experience set up. So that they can just leave all their worries like back on earth and have this almost like enjoyable multi-month experience. Yeah, and, and lastly, um, we wanted to add some kind of customization to the rocket. I feel like rockets are, they're fun to look at, they're cool to look at, um, but I think, uh, you, you, I think, I mean, we all know those like cool airplanes that have like pictures of people on them or just, you know, just drawings. Um, so like maybe having custom paint on the rocket or if a customer wants, like um, if they want a segment of the rocket for them to design or if they want to put a logo on there, um, just go ahead. I think it, it just adds a little bit of personalization, but also a uniqueness to the trip, um, knowing that um, your work is on the rocket somewhere. So yeah, that, those are our ideas in terms of addressing this issue. That's awesome. Great work, y'all. I mean, the puppy idea is kind of tough to beat. I'm not going to lie. So let's see how group two comes up. Let's move over here. Group two, take it away. Uh, I can, I can talk. Uh, basically we were looking at, uh, we, we kind of went full spirit airlines on this one. That's kind of what defined our mindset on how we wanted to approach things. 
Uh, we started between long distance and short distance trips because we kind of felt like, kind of like uh, with the analogy of like airplanes, you kind of have different amenities with each of those. Um, so someone can present the short distance and the long distance ones. Yeah, so um, our short distance uh, solution was augmented, augmented reality. So like uh, the option to like, look out your window and have a 360 view of what's going on around you and then also like in terms of entertainment as well and then our learn our long-term um <laughs> our long-term um solution was um our chairs already massage you from like the engine thrust so like that's our that's our counter to spacex um so yeah Yeah, so we, you know, um, like he said, different flights have different amenities. You know, uh, a flight to Dubai, a, a, a 15 hour flight to Dubai has beds in it. So, you know, we have, we have different solutions for different things. You know, Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence wakes you up after a cryo nap is, is, um, was kind of a, an experience idea, you know, thinking bad about the movie. Uh, there's also, um, like electromuscular stimulation, you know, crying out, going to give you atrophy, you know, got to keep, when you wake up, you don't want to be just on a wheelchair until you recover. Um, so most of our ideas are, are, are kind of feature base and efficiency or, or experience, um, experience driven. Awesome. Well, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know who Chris Pratt is, but whoever who does know who Chris Pratt is must be really, really happy. Yeah, look, look, sorry, sorry. I don't know. I just don't watch a lot of movies. Jurassic Park, I guess he's an actor. I've never seen Jurassic Park before. Um, all right, moving on to group three before I get roasted. Wait, you haven't watched like Marvel? No. Orleans of the Galaxy? Yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, literally the main character. Who's the main character again? <laughs> Star Lord? No? Uh, I might have to rewatch it and get back to you on that. Okay. All right, group three. Sure. So our pitch is uh, similar to group ones and some of group twos, which is the journey. It's, it is the journey. It's not the destination. And so we want to make space and experience by creating airless BNB. Uh, and what we'll do is focus on the infrastructure of stays in space and um, team up with SpaceX. So instead of competing directly with them for passengers, we'll specialize in uh, what makes space and experience and SpaceX can handle the expensive part. Anybody want to add anything else? We did, so an alternative was that we use some of the passengers as fuel um, on a lottery-based system. So everybody else's ticket gets cheaper, but if your lottery comes up, you become what makes, makes it go. But we, we got rid of that idea for legal reasons. Anybody else want to? I, I I like that idea. I thought that was that was definitely like high up there. But yeah, like um, as Aaron was saying, like this Airbnb airless BNB like model. So we were planning on you know potentially having like I guess like pastors to do like space marriage. You know if if that the time comes for that on like uh, on the journey, as well as like asteroid like resorts and mining potentially monetize off of the people who are like do, doing these events. And um, maybe having like some like playground and like other facilities and activities and infrastructure, as Aaron was saying. I don't know if anyone else wants to add. Also, one of their ideas was fighting Elon Musk. I just thought I should throw hey, it. Hey, whoa! Why are you just exposing us? Like that's not that's not very nice. Yeah, I just thought the people should know the truth. You know. Okay. You, you so... want to put people in the engine. So there are fewer. Okay. <laughs> There's no such thing as bad PR. 
Okay. I mean, if you guys are okay with it, we'll roll with it. So. All right. Well, let me see. Can I get this? Yeah, that's going to end it. Thank you guys so much for, you know, just taking the time, coming over here, taking an hour out of your Thursday. Hopefully you got to interact with a few of the other fellowship teammates a little bit more, created a little bit of a connection there. We hope to continue to not really helping Rocket Mars every week because they're kind of a dead company, to be honest, but different types of socials just so you can get to know each other a little bit better. Here are some reminders for next week. I'll just put up on the slide real quick. Make sure if you haven't already, onboard yourself on Slack and the Notion page. Make sure you put a little bit of description about yourself. Send an intro into Slack. Introduce yourself with your mentor. You should all have been putting groups with your mentor. You should just in, like talk to them, introduce yourself, set up a call between them, get to know them a little bit better. Your SX um, exec member who will be advising your team is also going to be on the lookout for that. So they're going to send you a calendar invite, hopefully sometime this weekend, schedule a call, kind of talk you through how the program will run a little bit more. And then next week, our workshop speaker who has said he will be there, so hopefully he pulls through, will be walking through how to develop a value proposition so first 30 minutes or so, talk about a value prop, what it is, why you need it, and how to develop it. Next 30 minutes, you'll be working with your teams to kind of come up with your own value prop, and you can always pop back to him and ask questions, get advice on what he thinks. But he's doing pretty big things, so I would definitely say on the lookout for this. Thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to like stay at the end and let us know. Yeah, thank you all. Um, uh, see you all next week. I think next week's going to be a, a really good workshop. So uh, be excited for that. <laughs>